Okay. Well, welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. Uh, once again, we're all here. I'm broadcasting from Los Angeles, California on this beautiful, stormy, rainy day, which we really needed some rain because we actually haven't had any rain this year uh, in comparison to last year when we had a lot of rain. Oops, I'm going to turn my... Okay. Um, thanks for your patience. I was a little bit late today. It took me about a, an hour and a half uh, of driving to get to our office. And uh, so I'm here <laughs> in one piece, thank God. I was a little bit concerned, maybe I don't make it in time. So I was communicating with Shishi and uh, I thought maybe she has to start the academy. Uh, by the time I get here. But anyway, all is well, we're all here. It's nice to have you all. I like to welcome those of you, uh, the first timers, um, for joining us. And uh, nice to see all of you who've been with me before. Now, as usual, uh, let me explain very quickly for those of you who are with me for the first time is what we're going to do is we're going to do a meditation uh, for about 20 minutes to half an hour and after the meditation during the meditation a transmission will take place and uh, after that you're welcome to ask me questions you can either uh, write your question on a chat box or wave at me and if I see you then uh, I'll unmute you and, and you can talk to me directly. The reason we have to mute everybody is because the devices make funny noises and things start to sound really weird. So uh, until the technology of the webinar gets to the point that um, it's very advanced and we can leave everyone unmuted, until then which I just I'm forced to mute everyone. Okay, so, of course, Miss Rosalie is the first one who writes something to me. <laughs> Rosalie, I see you. You're there. Nice to see you, sister. Just hang in there and I'll get back to you. Um, all right, so let's do the first meditation. Why don't we just... Let's do a grounding meditation. And the grounding meditation is we get connected to planet Earth. So we're going to have to be standing up. I'm going to ask you to stand up. And kind of feel your feet connected to the planet Earth or connected to the floor. Just feel your feet and kind of go up and down a little bit like this. Gently go up and down and, and get connected to the ground. And what we're going to do is you're going to imagine, visualize that you're a big, thick, old tree, which is very well rooted into the planet Earth. And just imagine from your base chakra you have grown roots and your roots go deep in the planet so for one moment just close your eyes and visualize this and as you it just takes a moment of visualizing that you have grown roots into the planet into the earth and now as you breathe in, take a deep breath. You breathe the energy in and you breathe out. Okay, now visualize that from your roots, you're sucking in green energy, healing energy from planet Earth. <coughs> As you can see, most vegetation on this planet is color green so we're 
bringing in the prana, the energy force, the life force of the planet in the form of a green color and you're just sucking it in and as you're sucking it in through your roots you can see that this energy is coming in the form of a spiral it's spiraling in so it's just an imagination and if you can't quite imagine it that way it's okay however you do it it's okay don't really worry about the mechanics of it so much you just do it one time so breathe in and breathe out and it goes up so just see that this energy is spiraling through your body and as this energy moving up it's connecting every chakra to the to the next one to the next one to the next one and then this green light is going out of your crown chakra up into the space so let's do that again breathe in breathe out breathe in and breathe out and now as you're doing this and you're going up and down gently you're squatting gently i want you to start to make this noise as if you are a powerful generator and this genera generator is generating energy it's sucking in energy like a vacuum you're vacuuming you're sucking the planet earth energy you're bringing it into your body and it's connecting all the chakras to each other in one light green light line and then it goes out of your crown chakra and don't worry if the color changes as you're doing it. Don't worry about that. So let's start. We're gonna start doing this and you're gonna make this noise. The noise is like this. becomes effortless and as you're doing this visualize the green light green force the the life force of planet earth is entering into your body and healing you clearing you taking all the blockage all the negative stuff everything is clearing up and the energy is moving up through your crown chakra, connecting the earth to heaven. Yeah, 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 yeah
you know, you know, you know, you know, keep going up and down and make the noise. After a while, it all becomes automatic, and you kind of lose yourself into the entire movement and the noise. You just kind of keep your attention on one point and just keep breathing in and out. Keep going up and down. Just see the energies moving through your body and connecting all the chakras together. And it's getting to a point that you just one tube, one being of light, and you don't have any body, you have no boundaries, it's all light. Take a deep breath. Oh. You can stop now and put your hands on your chest area. Your attention is on one point. You have your attention on your third eye. Take a deep breath. Now I'm going to ask you to raise your hands as you have your attention on your third eye. You have we're going to be jumping up and down. We're going to start with Yahoo and move into Hoo Hoo. Your, your attention is on one point. You're focused on one point. So we start. Yahoo! chest area your heart and feel just feel the vibration in your body keep your attention on one point and repeat after me I love myself I love myself I love myself I love myself I love everybody I love everybody. 
I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Take a deep breath. Keep your attention on one point. And then once again, raise your hands to the sky. We're going to do the Yahoo again. Yahoo! on your third eye as you have your hands on your heart and just feel your own being feel your presence the awareness which is here and is simply aware it doesn't matter what your story is right now you're simply aware of being here and repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 You're welcome to come back to your seats. And sit, go back and just sit comfortably, close your eyes and go back to your meditation and go back to your own center and simply be and don't try to manipulate anything. Just simply sit in silence and keep your attention on one point.
Just allow things to be. Allow your thoughts to travel, if any. Allow your emotions to pass by. Don't manipulate anything. Don't try. Simply allow. Allow things to come and go. You're simply being here right now. You're not trying to manipulate anything. You're exercising your natural state of being. Simply being. Not being this, not being that. Not trying to get anywhere or avoid a place. A very effortless, natural state of who you are. Simply being here. Effortless. as you're simply being available, in this place of effortless being, you begin to experience an expansion. You begin to experience that there is no limitation. There are no boundaries. You may not even feel your body or you may begin to have an awareness beyond your body, a sense of oneness, being weightless, limitless, simply awareness here, but not having any limitations. Some may experience being weightless in, in space, floating in space.
slowly, slowly, you can come back. amazing how powerful meditation is of simply being quiet maybe doing some exercises and coming back to our center and just being available and everything becomes quiet and all of a sudden you're in complete alignment with yourself and your surrounding because you have come back to your center your attention comes to one point and you're breathing comfortably you're not breathing from up here from stress or anxiety you have deep breath and your breath gets synchronized with the planet earth And since we are from, we are a part of this planet, we're not separated from it. So the pulse of the planet, affect us very deeply. And if we learn how to synchronize ourselves with the pulse, with the breath of the planet, then we experience tremendous amount of synchronicity in our lives and realizing that this planet the ecosystem works based on change and seasons and it's seasonal and of course depending where what part of the planet you live in uh, your seasons will be different than other people and they could be longer or shorter but basically for most people or majority of places on the planet we do experience seasons and naturally when the planet does go through different cycles in a form of seasons and okay so we have winter turns to spring and spring to summer and summer to fall and it just turns around naturally we too as human beings and inhabitants of the planet we go through our own seasons too our own natural seasons of of life and consciousness we go through different periods and if you look at it deeply you will see depending on what the season the cycle of your season individually is um, you know, some people may say it's every nine years or every seven years or whatever. Um, but I would say you just want to look at your own life to see which season uh, you're in right now. And, you know, you may 
experience like you know I have people come and tell me like oh Zarathustra 10 years ago I was living in such and such place I went to India or I was traveling around Asia for a number of years and it was a lot of fun and I used to go to festivals and carnivals and it was so free and go see different gurus and stay different in different ashrams. I was free floating and I was backpacking and it was such a fun period in my life and now I don't know what happened or I came back to my country and I fell in love and I got married and now I have kids and now I live a very ordinary life or I work as a nurse or what, whatever is the story, you know, I'm just, I'm just using examples. And so you may think like, or even spiritual, spiritually, you may say, oh, you know, like five or 10 years or 20 years ago, I went through this process of complete awakening and I felt very spiritual and I felt very connected and I would meet a lot of spiritual people and I was seeing different gurus and reading different spiritual books. And then I don't know what happened. I deviated from it and I got out of my path and uh, for another five, six years, I got lost. And now I feel like coming back into it. You know, we, I'm using these examples to just pointing out to something. And what I'm pointing out to is that it's not that you lost. It's that you're going through a different season of your evolution, of your, your awakening, your consciousness. And... Just if you're going through a period that it looks mundane or boring, it doesn't mean that it's going to stay like this it, or nothing is happening or, or there's not much excitement going on in your life. So it could be like you're in a season of winter and everything is quiet. You feel like sleeping a lot, like what how it is in winter time. You know, it's cold, you don't want to be out there, you don't feel like having a lot of energy, it's dark, it's raining, and you feel like staying inside and keeping warm and cozy or maybe hibernating or being with your partner or being with your kids, and uh, you don't really feel like going out there. And then it comes to spring, and the sun starts to come out and it starts warming up and the nature wakes up and you feel the same way. And all of a sudden you're, you're on and your energy's back and uh, you want to be out there playing, um, walking around, being in a park, going to the nature. Um, you may be extremely sexually turned on, you know, all your juices are flowing, you're, you're alive. You're back. So it's the same thing in our, in our lives. We go through seasons. Very similar to seasons that the planet is going through. But now these seasons, they for each and every one, it varies. And it's got its own length. But at the end of each season, a certain kind of maturity takes place. And you are stepping up these ladder, this mountain of consciousness that you're traveling, going up to the top. Uh, Hilda, you, uh, anybody has a comment or do you have any questions about what we're talking about? It also explains why you didn't get your books done because the apple trees start growing apples in certain seasons. 
About my book? Yeah. Did somebody ask ask or you just came no, up with it? Or oh, okay. Right. Well, she she's saying she she's saying uh, I talk about um, she's comparing the like an apple tree or maybe apples take longer to to an apple tree to be producing apples in comparison to tangerine or something like that. And uh, she's she wants me to talk about, for example, my second book and. I, I sort of have finished everything, but it's been sitting there and we have not edited the book. <laughs> it's been almost two years. <laughs> and uh, yesterday I, ta I was talking to Shishi and I was saying, okay, so from tomorrow on, which is today, we're going to put one hour every time we get together into working on the book and working on producing the uh, uh, my meditation CD, my, the album. But we keep saying it tomorrow, 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 and I don't get to it. But what what she wants me to explain to that divine timing. I guess this is what you brought up as well, uh, Hilda. Right? Divine timing. Yeah. Um, I have come to trust for being forced really to trust divine timing that everything will take place and everything come together and everything will happen at exactly the right place. And of course, like everybody else on this planet, every once in a while, my mind comes and the thoughts come like, what are you doing, Zarathustra? <laughs> <laughs> Should you be here? Should you be there? You should be finishing. You should be finishing your book and da, 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 and you're not doing it and you're lazy and blah, 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 blah. Of course, the thoughts come. And, uh, but okay, the thoughts come very strongly that I should be doing this and I should be doing that, okay? But I, I want to get up to do it and there's no energy or somehow I can't, no matter how much I have the best intention on doing something, I try to start, jumpstart myself to do it, I can't do it, it's not happening. And of course, your mind is very, it's a lot easier to think about doing something than actually physically doing it. Because thinking about doing something is very effortless. It doesn't take much energy. So your mind comes and says, okay, you gotta do this, and you gotta da 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 da, and ba 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 ba, and you gotta accomplish this. But the body doesn't move. So it's natural if there are moments of frustration, that frustration may come and you have to express yourself that you're frustrated. But then there is this deep understanding of that when the right time comes, when the right season arrives, then the energy is going to be there to accomplish something, whatever that thing is, in the right divine timing. And I say that the right divine timing is because of my direct personal experience that when the source, the source of all, I call it, I call it God. I know it's old fashioned, but when the source of all, the, the force of life, 
the source of existence, that which runs the show, the self, wants something to happen. It happens immediately and effortlessly. I have seen that many, many different times. And so many times I have to remind others, remind myself of, of that. When the mind comes and says, what are you doing? How come you're not doing this? Or why aren't you where you're supposed, where, where I think you should be? You should be up here. You should be somewhere else. You should be doing something different. You should have accomplished more. And then you just come back to your center. It's the same thing as we were doing earlier, meditation. You come back to your center. You come back to this place again. And then all of a sudden, the realization comes that you're exactly where you need to be right now. And you can just relax in this moment. and allow things to unfold according to whichever season your life is taking you to. Hilda, Thank sweetheart, you. I, I uh, unmuted you. So, yeah, you have anything? Else? No, I got the answers. Thank you. Thank you for the re reminder. Right. The, um, yeah, the nature of the mind is very tricky, of course. And that's not only for you, it's for all of us. Yeah, it's so easy to beat myself up because I think that I should have done everything yesterday, right? And everything should happen so fast. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you, and, Know that you're not the only one who that goes through that mind process. Yeah. That's so, good. Yeah, exactly. Because, look, let me make it very clear. As long as you're in a body and you live on this dimension, it's a dimension of duality, you're going to have a mind you're going to have thoughts, you're going to have feelings, and you're going to have this physical body to deal with. Yeah. I mean, that's your instrument of connecting with this existence. That's your instrument. Your working mind and the monkey mind. Of course, we are working on getting out of the monkey mind. That's what we're working on. This exercise, this teaching, this work we're doing is to help us liberate ourselves from the working mind, uh, the monkey mind, the chatter, the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And to help you free yourself from this identification with all these different emotions that they go through you to and ultimately recognizing that we're not limited to this physical body and it's only an instrument and it's not who we really are we're not really this body which is the last standing, the last powerful identification mechanism that we have, that we're all very much identified to a certain degree to it. So the more we're doing the work, the more you are becoming self-aware the more you 
are in this season, in your spiritual season, and you are going through your teenage years <laughs> of your awakening. The teenage years, I, I, I call it. Yeah. You know, your beginning of awakening, going through the teenage years. And what is the teenage years? Let me explain that. You're starting to feel some energy. You're starting to play with crystals. You're starting to play with tarot cards. You're starting to play with stones. You're starting to play with different concepts of visualizing, manifesting things. And sometimes they do happen. You start to play with these new stuff that you weren't aware of before, you know? And now they're coming to you and everything is new and interesting and exciting. And you're like a teenager that has just gone through the puberty, you know, before the puberty, right? You have no sexual energy. You very little think about your opposite sex or not a, you know, a, a partner or playing with someone else sexually and physically. So what do you do? I mean, you're talking to a 10 year old boy and you, you know, you're jokingly say, Hey, how's your school? And what about the girls? Do you have any girlfriends? And a 10 year old boy says, Oh, I don't like, I hate girls. <laughs> but the same boy three years after doesn't want to play with the toys anymore as much. <laughs> and now wants just putting his hair together and wanting to look slick and everything, you know, by the 14, you know, things are changing. Or for the girls, of course, you can see they're going through of the more visual changes of all of the sudden they're starting to grow breasts and, and their hips changing. And so they're entering into this new season of their life that physically and ho the hormones are changing. And as all these changes is happening, the agenda is changing too. Your agenda is changed. Now you're interested in something different that you weren't really interested very much before. There was very little interest in it. Yeah, of course, before your puberty, you could be attracted to other people, but it's not your primary drive force as you go through puberty and you go through this hormonal change and you enter into this new season of, of yourself and you now your agenda has changed. And now everything is interesting and everything is different. And now you're going to start play with it and you're going to touch things and you're going to experiment with different things because you are going to do an experiment on your own sexuality, something that you didn't know much about, or you heard about it, or you read something about it, or adults talk about it, or you see movies, or whatever it is, but it has not been a direct experience. And now you're going through this for the first time. So you're a teenager. And the same thing is with spirituality and your spiritual growth is that a lot of people start to go through their teenage years of spirituality. So they start playing with toys. But as you season and grow, you lose interest in stuff. Hmm. You go into another phase. As you mature, 
you're not inter you I'm, and then don't take me wrong i'm not putting something down or making fun of it i'm using examples okay i just want to be very clear about this this is not an insult to any sort of your form of belief system i'm talking about first of all using an example and secondly i'm talking about my personal direct experience and and that's it. Everything that I do speak about is my own direct experience. It's not a concept. It's not something I've read somewhere or it's not something I learned from a spiritual teacher and I'm repeating it and blah, blah, blah to you. I'm just talking about my own experience. Is For me, it was that I went through these stages. I was so fascinated with devices, you know, laser, and the stones and crystals and and um, the tarot cards and horoscope and numerology and enneagram and all these different things that oh what does this mean or what does that mean or yeah and it's valid it's very valid in your teenage years of being of your spirituality to go through these things. But eventually, as you mature in your awareness, you grow out of it. Just like you grow out of your childhood and you become go through puberty and you're not interested in those toys as you get 14, 15, 16 years old, you just the toys are sitting in a corner of your room and now your closet is expanding now you buy a skateboard now you're interested in going skiing now you're interested in going dancing now you're in your bathroom you have more hair products and you have more makeup because you're more interested in your appearance and you're more interested in boys or girls and connecting in that way. So you grew out of that stage. And as you're going to your 20s or mid-20s, you're done with college or whatever, now your interest changes again. Now you're more thinking about career or marriage or making money or traveling. And those things you were doing in your teenage years, they're becoming kind of silly, you know? You outgrow it. You don't feel like doing those things. If you feel there's silly stuff, you may tell yourself, I don't want to do these silly things. I'm not saying they're silly, but I'm just saying you grow out of it. As simple as that. So you're entering into a new season of your, your spiritual growth. And the same thing is with energy work. Same thing with tools. Same things with things. I went through, there was a period of time like, I would read whatever spiritual book that I got my hands on. I just had to, oh, the last barrier about the Sufism, or the da 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 da, how to reach the seventh, I don't know, level of consciousness, the nine steps to da 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 da, the secret path to blah blah blah, the amazing, um, I don't know, whatever. I was just a junkie. I don't know how many books I read. Or, you know, and there were days that I was just doing so many different rituals from the time I, you know, I grew up that I would get up and do some meditation and then I had to do some cleanses and da 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 da, da and then I had to have certain crystals and magnets at night when I slept and they had to, uh, 
everything in my room had to be perfect and everything had to be spiritual and I had to wear my malas and my hair had to be da 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 or I had to have a third eye here or, or uh, uh, there was just so many different things that I remember at one point I was just exhausted. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm so tired. Oh, I forgot before I sleep. I forgot to do 101 time of the special mantra meditation. And okay, I'm half asleep and I have to get up and do my 101 mantra thing or 108, 108 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, there is so much stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> and you know and there, there was a time that i rebelled against all of these things and i went the opposite way i went to the deep end the other opposite way i was like forget about this is all bullshit and i'm just drinking glick, 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 tequila and i'm <laughs> partying and i'm taking massive amount of substances and and uh and i say fuck that shit it's bullshit and i go to the opposite side <laughs> you know <laughs> I, you know and then i go through this season of my spiritual growth of doing everything you're not supposed to do spiritually <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome. And and ultimately is all of it is okay. <laughs> I mean as long as you don't hurt yourself or anybody or you don't break the law or whatever. Um I'm not endorsing anybody to do what I did. Okay? But I had to go through these different seasons, spiritual seasons. And each season was divine, by divine timing, it was perfect for me. Okay. And that's exactly what I needed to go through <laughs> to add to my spiritual growth and to mature me and to bring me to where I'm at today. And yeah, and then if you talk to me today or somebody asks me today, it's like, yeah, none of these things are necessarily because the self, the presence, the I am is always here. It doesn't need any crystals. It doesn't need to wear a mala. It doesn't need to do anything. It doesn't need to do meditation either. It doesn't even need to do mantras. It doesn't need to be vegetarian. It can drink alcohol. It can eat meat or not, or cigarettes or not, because none of it has anything to do with the presence of the I am. The presence of the I am is always here. And it doesn't matter what kind of action, thoughts, feelings you have, the presence of I am is always I am. It's always been I am. It's always I am. It can never be added to and it can never be taken away from it because who you really are outside of your thoughts, your ideas, your emotions, your body is pure presence. It's the self. It's the big kahuna. It's the one in your essence. 
outside of your ideas, that part of you who is watching, you know, the one who's watching, the one who's perceiving, that you can never see it. It sees everything. It sees your thoughts passing by. It sees your emotions going up and down. Fear comes, anger comes. You feel blocked. You feel separated. It sees these things and it sees the meat going through different stages. You know, you feel fit, you feel good, you put on weight, you're sick, you're great, you lose a hand. I don't know, you lose your hair, you lose something, or you look better, or you look worse. Something is observing all of these things. Something is aware of all of these things. That part that is you, the I am, the watcher, doesn't need any initiations. It doesn't need any activations. It doesn't need to purify itself. It is purified. It's the source of purification. That one can't see itself. So, you know, the one, the, what we're looking for is we're looking for that one from the looking. Mm -hmm. We're looking for God and realization, but the one who's looking is the one who's realized already. Yeah. Of course. It's the, the observer. <laughs> it can't see itself. So uh, certainly it needs to create some kind of duality, some manifestation, so it can see itself because it can't really see itself because it's always here. It's always still. You know, like when you sleep at nighttime, you just, you just met your love of life. You just got married to your sweetheart. You finally met your sweetheart. You're crazy about your partner. Oh my God, I'm so in love. And at the very, you're holding each other at night and you're inseparable and you're lying down in bed and you're just really holding each other. But in the very last moment, when you're about to fall asleep, you fall asleep by yourself. You're, you take yourself to, to, to bed. You, sleep, you take yourself to sleep. And then when you sleep, and you go into this deep sleep that there is no dreaming, your beloved disappears. Your better half that you're crazy about is not there anymore. Because you're, you're not there. And your political ideas, your spiritual ideas, everything disappears. None of them are there because <laughs> you're in a deep sleep and there is no idea of you. You're not even aware of yourself and everything else disappears with it. Yeah, it does. I mean, this is, this is fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> It cannot be any more amazing than this. That you already that means you don't have to do anything to get to it. You're already it. <laughs> means you're done. You're done. <coughs> you don't have to do spiritual work. If you realize this, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do any jumping jacks. If you realize it, that the one who's looking is, that's the one you're looking for. If you recognize it, you're done. 
forever. And you recognize your own purity. You recognize that the self of who you are, the truth of who you are, is perfectly pure, perfectly here, always here. It can never be tainted. It's always present, always here. It's the source. You, you are the source of everything. And I'm not, when I say you, I know your mind goes into this, like, what do you mean me? Um, I feel very needy, or I feel like hurt, or I feel like I still haven't found my man or my woman. I'm not talking about that you. I'm talking about you who is here. The I, the, your sense of being, your, the I am the observer the part of you that observes seasons passing how do you know seasons passing to whom do they appear who is observing seasons passing the observer yeah the observer you who is observing my mind oh my mind my mind my mind is so strong Zara too strong my mind is so disturbed. Well, who is aware of this mind? How are you aware of this mind? <laughs> do, you, do you see this? Yeah. You know, do you, you, do you, do you guys, do you get a glimpse of it? Just for one minute, step back outside of the story outside of the concepts everything you think you know about spirituality or realization or spiritual work or whatever just step back for one moment and come back to this place of look you're able to pay attention to your mind and i'm putting out this point this place as a point of reference when i say the mind because most of us believe that our, our thoughts are here whether they're here or here or wherever it, who cares but i'm pointing out to it but the thoughts the emotions so you're in this place you're aware an emotion is traveling through you something arrives okay you feel a little scared you feel depressed you feel turned on you feel sad you there is a loneliness comes or there is a frustration comes okay so who is noticing it? Who is seeing it? It's, yeah, to whom, to whom is this arising? So, look, ask yourself that question. Who, who is noticing the rise of this emotion or the passage of this emotion? And who is seeing, noticing these thoughts? This who must be very still, very present, not moving, so it can observe movements. It can observe changes. So you bring your attention to that one and you can see for yourself that this one which is you again when i say you i'm not talking about your character your personality because those all change i'm talking about the sense of being aware that sense of being aware is always here and doesn't need any work. What do you need to do? 
to be aware. How much work do you have to do? Oh, I'm really working on myself to be aware that it's raining outside. Well, no kidding. I'm really working on myself to be aware of my mind. Well, you can hear your mind all the time. What do you need to do about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, believe me, you don't need to be aware of your mind. Your mind will come and grab you, you know, grab your throat and squeeze by bo mind bombardments. When something goes wrong, you, know, you don't have to work on that. <laughs> you, are, you, you are aware of it. And you are aware of your emotion, especially when something happens that threatens you, you know, disturbs you, how can you not be aware that you're angry? How can you not be aware that you're heartbroken, you're jealous? Your, your guy just went and flirted with someone else in front of you and you're cooking. How can you not know? Do you need to work on that? To, I am working on myself to be aware that I'm feeling. <laughs> you don't have to do anything to feel. You feel. Existence will remind you every five minutes, every two minutes, especially if you have kids. Especially if you're in a challenging relationship. You don't need to do anything. Do you see the power, the beauty, the truth of who you are? I am is aware of things passing by. And that I am is always here, which is you, your sense of being your sense of presence. You don't have to work on it. You just notice it. There is an, it's a noticing it. And the more you start to notice it, the more you disconnect from what you thought you were all your life, which is your thoughts and your mind. You start to realize that it's not who you thought you were. It's not what you've been to told from your childhood. And you start to see or not your emotions that come and go. And as that process happens, so now you're entering into the new season of your spiritual growth. And the disconnection to this part starts to take place. You're disconnecting from your mind and your mind cannot grab you by your throat so strongly anymore. Its grip starts to loosen up because you're starting to see that you're not your thinking mind. So it's losing its grip. And it's losing its this very strong reality that had before, it starts to just disappear. And, and you start to feel, to feel free. And now you're maturing on this spiritual path. You have come out of your teenage years and coming to more maturity. And of course, as you become more aware of it, it gets more distant from you. But is it going to be there? Yeah. All, all the clouds going to pass through sky? Yeah. If you live in Southern California, most days there's no clouds. But some days there are clouds. So same thing. 
if you live in Scandinavia or North Pole or in 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 Vanc in uh, Toronto or Canada or whatever, most of the time you're gonna have clouds and 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 strong storms or whatever. And then as you go down to Caribbean, you're gonna have more sunny days. So same thing. The more you become aware that you're not your thinking mind and your your emotions, the more you get disconnected from it the more sunny days you're going to have in your life rather than storms. <laughs> you know, the more you get disconnected from those stormy days, those stormy days start to lose their grip and you're going to have more sunshine and clear blue sky in your life. That becomes your reality and for that you don't need to use crystals you don't need to change your hairstyle you don't have to quit smoking cigarettes if you like to smoke cigarettes smoke your cigarettes do what you have to do that doesn't have anything to do with awareness it has no effect on awareness. It may, may make you feel like shit the next day if you smoke 20 cigarettes today and then you get up the next day, your throat feels like shit. But the ability to be aware that your body feels like shit doesn't change. The awareness is still the awareness. The fact that you don't want to be vegan or you want to be vegan or you like to meet eat versus vegetables that's not going to take your sense of i am away it has no bearing on sense of i am so let's not confuse things and project your spirituality on behavior and objects because it's not there it has nothing to do with it it never had anything to do with it. <laughs> Existence doesn't give a shit if you're meat eater or you're vegan. It doesn't give a hoot. Or you drink alcohol or you don't drink alcohol. You know, I'm using extreme, I'm using strong examples. I'm not encouraging it, of course. Yeah, I mean, if you eat really healthy, which I recommend that, and you're not abusing substances, you're going to live a much healthier, vibrant life. Okay? But it has nothing to do with sense of I am. The sense of I am is always here. The observer is always observing that doesn't change on what kind of behavior you have what kind of habits you've picked up it's just in the relative reality in this reality that you're living you're going to feel more better and healthier if you live healthy and if you're not being drunk you won't do silly stupid things and you don't put yourself in danger and other people. And you don't destroy your liver. And if you don't smoke 20 cigarettes a day, you're not going to destroy your lungs. But it has nothing to do with awareness. Yes, it has something to do with body awareness, health awareness. But not with the sense of I am. The sense of I am cannot be touched, tainted manipulated, changed by anything. It's always here. So you bring your attention on the sense of I am that you have and you start to see you're free. It's just as simple as that. All you have to do is bring your attention to this part of yourself, 
rather than looking for it outside, you just bring your attention to one pointedness within this part, which is here. It's aware and it's observing. And then you'll see you're free. <laughs> yeah 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 sure okay let me um all right katrin i guess you're okay with us sharing yeah she shared it with everyone yeah okay so katrin is sharing with us Okay, I'm going to read what she's written. After our last time, I had a really amazing healing. I had chicken pox virus and blisters were coming out of my left foot and I was in so much pain. My doctor told me it, would, it could take weeks for it to heal and I could come in and get treatments for the pain. Saturday morning, I, I woke up and I was fine. No pain, no blisters, and I have been feeling so well since. Yay. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you very much for sharing this with us. So apparently, I guess you're referring to that you received the healing from, from our webinar. And in uh, reference to that i have to say that healing is a natural phenomena that happens and when we come back to the self when we come back to this sense of presence to this one pointedness then an expansion happens and of course we are doing this as one unit even though it's a number of us, but we come to one intention, and our intention is here and now, the presence. And we get away from the noise, from the identification with the mind, and the emotions, and the body, and we come to this one-pointedness within ourselves, the sense of I am. And that is in this moment and this moment is god this moment is the healer and as you come back to this place an expansion takes place and then healing becomes possible and this moment heals us so you are the healer you're looking for do you want to go a little longer? Reza has a quick question about everything you share. Reza, yeah, okay. Um, there's a bunch of uh, questions here. Have you looked at them? I don't see on, the on the chat? On the chat? No? Okay. They're just comments. All right. So, okay. All right, my brother Reza. I, 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 all right, brother man. Ask, ask me your question. Okay, if you have the time, first of all, thank you very much for saying all that. You said a lot of amazing things. I would like to say that I am totally agree with whatever you mentioned, and especially about the elimination of the restrictions that we make in our life. As you said that just following every spirituality path is good, but is it's not taking us to knowing. You mentioned about reading a lot of books. As you can see, in back, uh, back of my in my bag, I have got tons of books. These are just a half of the books that I read, and I gave the right. half of them to other people and friends. So they gave me a lot of knowledge, but not doing. So I understand that uh, uh, limiting ourselves in some rules or uh, some. Uh, Something is that taking us to self-realization. However, uh, you said about the, what we have to do. And you said a lot about what we have to do. But you didn't mention 
that how we are going to do that. I understand that just uh, taking care of our health is not taking, uh, giving, taking us to God. But according to what I've learned, as you mentioned, for example, I want to activate my third eye. And my, in order to do, activate my third eye, I have to keep my pineal gland healthy. And pineal gland produces melatonin, and melatonin uh, produces DMT. However, when it is calcified, then I have to go back to my physical life to eat healthy things and to avoid uh, fluoride, all this stuff, in order to keep it to that way. I understand that we are looking right. to right. go, we are looking for main meal, and we are not, we should not bother about the appetizer, dessert, and all the side effects. But the reason that I attend academy, and I think that everybody, is to keep our emotion, mind, thought in this atmosphere. Uh, you, right. Yes, I understand that if I get, get a glass of tequila and go to a casino in Las Vegas, <laughs> well, what's going on? it's going to keep me away from what I want to get rich today. So my question is short. You said that we have to come back to our self-realization, to awareness. Right. Yes, I understand that. How? H O W how I was explaining it to you the entire time today is simply by bringing your attention on the sense of I am the sense that you are do, do you know you are right now yes okay okay do you need anything to know that or is just simply you know that? No, I know that. However, I have to keep myself in an environment that doesn't damage that and creates uh, my surrounding. If I want to focus on reading a book, I have to keep my house warm and close all the noises outside so I can right. focus on that. Right. But if I want to say that, okay, don't go to, don't do that, all the spiritual things. You don't need really to do this mantra. You don't need to do that. Okay, stop. Then stop I will, stop, I will, stop I will, right there. Okay, okay. I will distract okay. myself. Right. Okay. If you have to do something, you have to create the environment to do that thing, right? Yes. But right now, right now, for being as you are, what do you have to do right now? Focus in, uh, to my insight. No, 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 not even focus. Mm -hmm. I'm saying right now for being, you are, right? I am actually. Okay. Are you doing anything to be right now? No, you, just, just be myself. Do you have to create any environment right now to be right now in this moment? No, but I have to. No, hold on a second. Just stay with me. You ask me a question. Okay. I'm answering you, correct? Okay. Right. Right now, to be, you're sitting on your chair. You got your um, headset on. And you got your computer in front of you, correct? And you're communicating with me, right? Right. Okay. So, to sit here. I know you need the devices to communicate with me, but that you're sitting where you're sitting. Do you have to do anything no. for just sitting where you're sitting right now? Right. Do you need an environment for this sense that you are? Do you feel like you are right now? You're alive. You're sitting there. Right? Put the story away. Put, put the story away that you need to open your third eye, you need to be spiritual, or any of those stuff. Put the story away, and let's just, let me walk you here. Right now. You, where are you? I'm here. Okay. And in here, do you need some, anything to do to be here? No. Okay. Now. If you get up and walk to your kitchen, you go to your kitchen, then where would you be then? 
I'm in the kitchen. Right. And when you're in the kitchen, do you need to do anything to be in the kitchen? No, just walk from here to the kitchen. <laughs> right. So wherever you are, right, in every moment, that's where you are. Do you have to do any preparation for that? <laughs> 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 just stay with me don't go anywhere okay okay put the idea the idea of i have to open my pineal gland i have to work on my third eye. they're very profound okay very noble ideas sounds great but what does that have to do with being here right now nothing do you need to open your pineal gland in order to be here right now no no so you don't have to do anything right and that's the beauty of the i am because you don't have to do anything to be the i am If you understand this part, my brother, then everything's solved. Everything is solved. That's right. And that's what my teaching is about. Oh. Every single time that I talk, whether, whether it's on the academy or it's a healing training program or it's self-love workshop, whatever it is, if you listen to me or watch my videos i always point out to this one thing it's never anything else and for this right now i am i'm here this is where the kingdom of heaven is because this is what we're looking for right as a spiritual seeker we're looking for this which we already have it but the mind comes with these concepts well jesus said that we have to blah 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 a uh, buddha said that da, 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 da. in buddhism they say you should be doing this you should be doing that in Tibetan Buddhism, you know, after seven times that you were born and died, and da, 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 da. put all those things away. And right now, in this moment here, well, all of you, not just Reza, all of us, what do I have to do in order to be in this moment? Outside of to be. It's effortless, isn't it? This is the juice. This is what we're looking for. It's as simple as that, my brothers and sisters. This is awakening. This is realization. This is enlightenment. This is where the Buddha is. This is where Osha, Yogananda, Maharishi, Dalai Lama, Amaji, they're all here in this place, in this moment. The rest is an idea, it's a concept you have because your mind needs to postpone full realization to another day and another time. It's a production of your mind postponing because your mind cannot comprehend it, can understand, because this is in the absence of your mind. There is no mind in here. You simply are. This is going to be my teaching day in and day out. If you don't feel resonant, and I'm not speaking to you, Reza, don't take it personally. Yeah, I'm talking to everyone, right. all my listeners, here, Facebook Live, Future. 
if you don't resonate with this teaching, then don't waste your time listening to me because I will not give you anything else. This is the ultimate thing I give you, which is nothing. I only have nothing to give you. I can direct you to many beautiful teachers that are going to give you a lot of work to work on yourself. That you have to work on yourself to get to it. And I'll be gladly give you names, ashrams, and direct you in that direction. If you want something, you're welcome to, you're wasting your time with me. Because I have nothing to give you. You already have it. I only keep mirroring back you to yourself. And that which you're looking for, it's already here right now. And you're in it. And you are it. And all these other exercises. Yes, I created the third eye activation meditation, self-love uh, and self-acceptance meditation. Yes, I understand that. But all of those things are directed back to this very thing I'm just sharing it with you right now. And none of those things are necessarily if you get this. And you don't need to have your crystals with you. And you don't need to do your tarot cards. And you don't need your astrology done. And you don't need channeling. And you don't need da 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 da. And you don't need to go to anywhere because it's here. And you're in it right now. If you like to go somewhere, it's cool. But the you're not going to find it there because it's already here. Nice to see you all. Thank you very much for bringing, sharing with me, Reza. You always bring very amazing questions. I really appreciate it. Hilde, you bring stuff. All of you who bring the questions and your concerns and your challenges with me, I don't, I don't want you to get a feeling like you're annoying me. If you're annoying me, I'll let you know. But you're not annoying me. I appreciate it because uh, it creates a platform because your question is everyone's question. Uh, yes, Miss uh, Rosalie, what can I do for you? I'm thinking about Mona. Okay, yes, we're thinking about Mona. Yes, yeah, if we all sending, could pray for her. Yeah, of course, I've already done that and I will continue doing it. And you definitely don't let me forget about it. So no, I get she, your messages. She sent her regards to all in the webinar. Give her my love and we're wishing her a speedy recovery. And uh, let's see what happens. Miracles okay. do happen all the time. Yeah, and yeah. It, it was 14 days, uh, 14 days she, the doctor gave her to live. And she had lived a half year after. Right, okay. Well, let's see what happens. Keep us yeah. updated. I'll send her a lot of love and light and healing energy. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, my, my loves. Love you all. Thank you for joining me. I'm, uh, I want to do a namaste, but I'm holding my phone in my hand. Just one second. Let me just fix the phone. Okay, so it doesn't fall. Okay. I can do it. Loving you all. The next academy is going to be on Tuesday. And, uh, oh, quickly. 
about upcoming events is that I will be presenting at Conscious Life Expo uh, from uh, February 9th to 12th. So, um, so you know, you may want to go on my website and click on, and by the way, the Conscious Life Expo, my events are going to be live streamed. Uh, so if you want to see what's going on there, you can, you can uh, uh, click on, I think there's a fee to pay, but you can watch the events and uh, the, that are being live streamed. And there are a lot of other great teachers, speakers that you will have access to. So that's what is going on. And the rest of my programs, upcoming programs, um, I'll be announcing them. We're working on them right now with Ms. Shishi to put everything on my website. And uh, I, I will make sure that you all know about it. So I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. And in the meantime, if you have questions, those of you who are friends with me on Facebook, you're welcome to reach out or send me an email or, or uh, contact Shishi. And uh, just bear in mind, sometimes I get a lot of messages and it takes me a little bit of time to get back. I try to get back to everybody, um, but sometimes it takes me a while to do that. Okay, loving you. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Much love.